Shimano has been at the forefront of mountain bike technologies since mountain biking really started. It was Shimano, in fact, that produced the first ever group set dedicated to mountain biking, Shimano Dior XT, back in 1982. And since then, they've continued to innovate. In fact, there are so many different technologies that it can feel a little bit intimidating and confusing to some. I mean, do you know the difference between your SLR and your SIS, or your free stroke from your servo wave, or your Hyperglide Plus from your Hyperglide? Hmm. Okay, so today's video, we are gonna clear it all up and take you through all of the Shimano off-road mountain bike technologies that you need to know about. Although Shimano has made all this incredible technology, to get your head around it can take a bit of research because there's pages of information online and loads of detailed videos about the specific technology. So Shimano asked us to make a one-stop video with everything you need to know about the modern mountain bike technology that they produce. So we're gonna work our way around a bike so you can understand all the differences between the major things that they offer. Let's get cracking. Okay, so in no particular order, I'm gonna start with the rear cassette and the shifting system first. Now, when Shimano introduced shifting onto mountain bikes, there was no sort of standards or anything. They were kind of figuring it out. And they developed something called Hyperglide, which was a cassette that had profile teeth and ramps on there, designed to help shifting under load. Because as we all know, when you're going through the gears, when you really need to crank through the pedals there to get going up a, a steep bank, can make a bit, bit of a mess of your shifting. So they refined that and it's been an excellent system for many years, but now we have Hyperglide Plus. Now you see this on their 12-speed systems on Dior, on SLX, XT and XTR, and it's the same concept, but it's designed to not only shift up the block into those lower gears, but down the block into those higher gears. Now the cool thing about this technology is you can shift under full load and you basically don't have to be delicate to the bike. You can hammer through the gears when you're hammering through those pedals and it's gonna shift quickly and accurately every time. Now bearing in mind, when you shift into a lower gear, so that's up the block into those larger sprockets, the system is tensioned as well as all that torque that's going through your legs. So the power that you're putting through is always gonna help it go up there, but the ramps and the teeth profiles and the gates that you can see, they're all refined to make the chain hop as quickly as possible up onto the next sprocket. It's actually a third faster than, than regular Hyperglide. Now here is the cool thing with Hyperglide Plus. Shifting back down the cassette into those smaller sprockets has always been something a little bit harder to manage by previous shifting systems. And the problem lies in the fact that the derailleur is not under tension when you're shifting down into those smaller sprockets. So what they've done is approach the cassette with the same system of ramps profiles and gates in order to literally hook the chain down onto the next one. And the shifting is faster and better than it's ever been. And that's what Hyperglide Plus is. Now to make the Hyperglide Plus system work effectively, we have what is known as Dynamic Chain Engagement Plus. Now it's a combination of things here. The profile on the teeth that I've already talked about with the Hyperglide Plus cassettes. You also have the teeth profile on the chain rings and then the all important chain. Now the thing with the chain is the inner links on them, if you look very carefully in these close-up images, you'll see they protrude low down compared to the outer links of the chain. So this is something that we haven't seen before. Now the idea is a better contact and they've also got chamfered edges there. So everything about the contact with the sprockets is smoother. There's less friction, it works better, it's a cleaner shifting and there's far less chance of that chain coming off. Next up is something called Siltec, S-I-L-T-E-C. Now you may or may not have heard of this, but this is a plating process applied to SLX, XT and XTR chains. Now you also see this in the road world as well, and it's a ultra low friction plating process. It actually reduces friction by 60% compared to non-coated chains, and it's 2.7 decibels quieter. The aim of Siltec is to run smoother and quieter in all conditions. And to maximize on that high Hyperglide Plus system, due to the nature of it being 12 speed, Shimano has had to redesign their classic splined interface there that the old cassettes used to slide onto and give us the micro spline. So you'll note the difference in size. The micro spline is smaller and that is to cater for that tiny little 10 2 sprocket that enables you to have that 520% gear range with that huge spread of gears. Now the interface itself is actually far tighter. They've got much closer together splines and it's essentially a much better carrier for a system like this that works extraordinarily well under load. 
And the last thing to reference with the Microspire system is how well it designs with load and torque. Now on some older designs of cassette and on some particular free hub bodies that were made of aluminium as opposed to steel, you could get scoring and damage on these that actually made it difficult to remove the cassettes. With this new interface on Microspline, that simply can't happen. And the last one to reference is Linkglide. Now, unlike Hyperglide Plus, which has developed to give you the best and quickest possible shifting, Linkglide is focused purely around durability. Now, yes, it's heavier, but Linkglide on average will last three times longer than a Hyperglide Plus style system. Of course, there is that weight penalty you have to add up. And you also can only have it up to 11 speed. Now, it was developed with e-bikes in mind, but if you're the sort of rider that goes through transmissions, it might be a great solution for you. Now, the bottom three sprockets, the smallest ones, actually wear out the fastest across the board. They're actually replaceable independently of the rest of the cassette, which is a very smart move. Now, like Hyperglide Plus, it does have its own shifting system of ramps and gates to help the chain up and down a cassette. But the actual teeth profile, if you look at this on screen right now, you'll see that they are much thicker. They're definitely designed to cope with the absolute worst you can put through a transmission. Okay, and on to braking. So Shimano have their ice tech or their ice technologies. Now this is all about the management of heat in braking. Now, as you imagine, when you're braking on a mountain bike with disc brakes, you're gonna generate heat. Now heat is unavoidable when braking. It is like a reference part of the key to braking systems working, but it has to be managed correctly if you want the optimum performance. And in extreme conditions, we're talking like enduro racing and downhill out and out racing, there can be serious amounts of heat that go through the braking system. So the idea of the ICE technologies is to pull as much heat away from the system as possible. Now let's start with looking at the brake pads for example. So this is a conventional brake pad that you'll see on a classic two piston brake. And this is an ICE technology brake pad. So yes, it still has a steel backing plate, but it has this huge aluminium cooling fin, much like you would see on hi-fi amplifiers and things like that. It's designed to pull the heat away from that braking surface as much as possible. You will also see things like extended banjo hoses in amongst the ice technology. The banjo itself, of course, is where the fluid transmits directly into the caliper. Of course, the caliper is gonna get hot under braking. If you can reduce the heat and pull the heat out elsewhere, it's another way of reducing heat to the system. Okay, and on to the disc rotors. Now, conventional ice tech rotors have a two-piece design. You have the steel braking rotor, and then you have the aluminium carrier. And essentially, the aluminium carrier that bolts it to the hub, whether it's via center lock or six bolt, helps pull heat away from the braking surface. But the ice tech freezer system goes even further than that. So you've got a sandwich braking system here. So the braking surfaces are made from stainless steel and you've got aluminium in the middle connected to the aluminium carrier. So all of that is designed to pull the heat away from those braking surfaces and you've got these heat fins as well. Now the reduction in heat is significant compared to a traditional steel rotor. There's a 100 degree reduction in heat compared to one of these and a 40 degree reduction in heat compared to the ice tech rotors that lack those fins on them. And they even offer a top of the range version that has special heat dissipating paint on here that further reduces it by 10 degrees. You think we're braking, it's all about heat management. If you're the sort of rider that gets the brakes hot all the time in long descents, the more you can do to keep your brakes cool, the better your braking performance is gonna be. Okay, so as far as mounting the brakes goes, you'll probably have seen rotors have six bolts on them like this. Uh, this is something that's been around for a while. And then you've got the center lock system by Shimano. Now this is a splined interface, arguably it's a much finer interface the way it goes onto the bike there. And the cool thing about this is depending whether it's front or rear on the bike, you'll be using tools you already have. So it might look like it's using a brand new tool, but you either use a bottom bracket tool, which you also use to put your, your Shimano bottom bracket in place, or a cassette tool, which is the same one used for any cassette on the market. It's a really effective system, and the fact it has a single point of contact means it's great when it comes to replacement and servicing. Okay, so up to the lever end then, and there's actually quite a lot of tech crammed into Shimano levers, be that Dior, SLX, XT, or XTR level, or even a Saint level. 
Now there's lots of different adjustment available and the things you will see is reach adjustment, free stroke, and you'll probably have heard of servo wave as well. So the reach adjustment, as you might have figured out, is to adjust the reach of the lever in relation to the bar. You can do this for preference or the size of your hands, uh, literally to dial them in exactly where you want. Some levers will have a dial, other ones you will need to use an Allen key. Now there's also free stroke, which is this little screw that you can see on the front of the lever here. Now this adjusts the bite point of the brake pads. So you can have the brake pads actually contacting really quickly or a little bit longer, depending on how you like the lever travel to feel on your brake. Now when you adjust the free stroke on your Shimano brake levers, it will bring the lever in slightly, so you'll also have to adjust the reach as well. But what it means is you've effectively got two lever adjustments that mean there's an almost infinite amount of adjustment there for you. Now there's also servo wave. Now this is very cool and it's something that dates back to cantilever brakes with Shimano. In fact, my first Shimano brakes had the servo wave system on there. A little window and you could see it working. Now the idea is with the first bit of lever actuation, it moves the pads a significant way. And the rest of the lever is the progressive feel that you get with them. What it does, it means the more you pull the lever, the more power you get. And it's why Shimano brakes feel so instantly powerful when you use them. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about shifting itself. So in amongst that, you've of course got the shifter, you have the rear derailleur there. Now the key with Shimano shifting is SIS, which is something I developed really early on, and it stands for Shimano Index System. Now the indexing refers to one click per gear. Now it sounds commonplace, you'll see this in virtually any gear shifting system available on the market now, but it was Shimano that really did this first. Before that, you had what's known as friction shifting. You had lots of tiny little clicks and you'd literally manually move your lever until the derailleur lined up per sprocket. So yes, it was difficult to shift one gear at a time because of this, but the benefit of the old friction system was, you know, if you bent something perhaps, it did mean you could sort of fine tune it. But the overall convenience of friction shifting just wasn't good enough. So SIS was developed to give you one click, one gear, and it just meant you could just hammer through those gears. So you might have had that from the beginning, and they've still got it today. Up to the lever mounting system, and you have the latest iteration of the iSpec. So we've had iSpec, we've had iSpec 2, and now we're up to iSpec EV. Now at a glance, they could all look similar. It's the beauty of having your gear shifter or your gear pod underneath the bars there on the same mounting system as the brake lever. It looks clean, you've got less clamps on the bar, and it just is a great adjustable system. iSpec EV is the latest incarnation of this. Now the brake lever has a main clamp, but it also has an additional support. So this is fantastic because it means your brake lever has a really positive action and there's no flex in the system at all. And the EV mount there for your actual gear shifter means you've got an almost infinite amount of adjustment up, down, in or out, no matter what your brake lever angle or position is on the bars. And the last thing to look at is the Shimano Shadow Plus rear derailleur. Now, when looking at the derailleur from the back of the bike, you'll see that the design of these shadow derailleurs is really tucked up underneath that cassette there. At least as tucked up as it can possibly be, uh, just to try and keep it out of harm's way. Now, all Shimano derailleurs with a Shadow Plus design there have that chain stabilizer built into them. Uh, you'll often hear this referred to as a clutch because it has essentially what is a mini sprag clutch on the inside there, a friction clutch. Very cool system, you can turn it on or off. Uh, you'd flick the lever to turn it off when you want to remove your rear wheel from the bike, for example, so you're not fighting the system. Now, the job of this chain stabilizer is to put tension on the lower part of the chain. Now, due to suspension designs and pedaling, you'll pretty much always have some tension on the upper part of the chain, which is why the chain never tends to come off at the top. If you're going through bumpy terrain, the lower part of your chain is always flapping around, and more often than not, if your chain drops off, what will happen is your chain will unwind from the bottom. This is designed in combination with Dynamic Chain Engagement Plus to really keep your chain on as much as possible, and an added benefit is it makes your bike really, really quiet. So, the Shimano SPD, Shimano Pedaling Dynamics. This was the pedal that really did revolutionize pedaling in a rough off-road scenario. If you skip back to the beginning for a minute, you had flat pedals on offer, or you could bolt on a set of toe clips and straps to those pedals. Now, the job of that was to keep your foot in place on rough terrain, and also to really sort of keep you an efficient pedaling uh, platform, I guess you could say. You could pull up, you could push down, and your feet would stay in place. The downside, you were quite literally strapped 
to the pedals, which could be terrifying at times. So Shimano developed the clipless system. Uh, you could argue you're clipped to the bike, but the reference was getting rid of the toe clip and strap. And they achieved this by having a recess in the sole of the shoe with a cleat in there and having a retention system on the pedals. Now Shimano design means you can independently design each of the jaws uh, for your clip in and clip out system. So you can have it nice and easy or you can have it absolutely rock solid depending on your preference. Now they have a really good mud shedding design so no matter how muddy they get you can push your way through the pedal and it will extrude that mud. There's various different pedal size cages available from the minimal cross country pedals through to the really big platform downhill pedals that offer the same sort of support that you see on flat pedals and they have a cartridge bearing axle system that just goes on and on. And then there's the Holotech crank design. Now you might look at a crank arm and think they're just a solid piece of aluminium. But in fact, the Shimano Holotech system proves that you can have a system that's hollow, lightweight, and very stiff and strong, applying the same technology that we've had in frame tubing for many years. Now, one of the other keys to the Holotech system is the bottom bracket and crank interface. You have a 24 mil spindle that goes through your bottom bracket shell. You've got those big outboard bearings that sit outside the bottom bracket shell to spread the load out and ultimately last longer in worse conditions. And then the whole lot is pinched together, much like a headset using a preload cap on the end. It is so simple and so effective. Okay, hopefully this video has helped you understand the major Shimano technologies when it comes to braking and shifting, and of course, pedaling out there. Now there's loads of these things, so if there's any little details I've missed or perhaps you don't still understand, get involved down there and we can dive into those in an Ask GMBN Tech show. And if you're interested in learning the same with all the e-bike technology, just don't forget they've got free shift, they've got loads of interesting stuff going on. Uh, on those bikes, let us know down there and we'll get the EMBN crew to make a similar video. Uh, leave us some feedback in the comments down there and we'll see you in another video soon. Take care.